silence. All stand and remain standing until the conclusion of the reading of the proclamation. Ladies and gentlemen, the proclamation. All persons having any business before this honorable court, now draw nigh, give your attendance, and you shall be heard. God save the Queen. Please be seated. of lawyers. Oluwa Timilahin Adebayo Ajibola. May it please the court, I move that Oluwa Timilahin Adebayo Ajibola be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Oluwa Timilahin Adebayo be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Marissa Louise Alexio. Let Marissa Louise Alexio be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Anurag Chadha. May it please the court, I move that Anurag Chadha be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Anurag Chadha be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Jun Kong Chai. May it please the court, I move that Jun Kong Chai be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Jun Chong Chai be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Wing Tun Chan. May it please the court, I move that Wing Tung Chan be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Wing Tung Chan be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Emma Kathleen Curry. May it please the court, I move that Emma Kathleen Curry be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Emma Kathleen Curry be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Moses El Saj. May it please the court, I move that Moses El Sarge be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Moses El Sarge be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Martin Hui Ching Fan. May it please the court, I move that Martin Hui Ching Fan be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Martin Hui Ching Fan be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Melanie Afonso Fernandez. Let Melanie Alfonso Fernandez be admitted as a lawyer of this court. <coughs> Francesca Guzzi. Let Francesca Guzzi be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Catherine Lauren Keane. May it please the court, I move that Catherine Lauren Keane be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Catherine Lauren Keane be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Nicola Joanne Kelso. May it please the court, I move that Nicola Joanne Kelso be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Nicola Joanne Kelso be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Ahmad Rukesh Maharaj. May it please the court, I move that my brother Amit Rakesh Maharaj be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Amit Rakesh Maharaj be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Diane Markantanakis. May it please the court, I move that Diane Markantanakis be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Diane Marcantonatus be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Michael Charles Martin. May it please the court, I move that Michael Charles Martin be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Michael Charles Martin be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Mark Daniel McAlary. <coughs> May it please the court, I move that my son, Mark Daniel McAlary, be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Mark Daniel McAlary be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Monique Jacqueline Messenger. May it please the court, I move that my daughter, Monique Jacqueline Messenger, be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Monique Jacqueline Messenger be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Shanice Nami. May it please the court, I move that Shanice Nami be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Shanice Nami be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Justin J. Pascalina. May it please the court, I move that Justin J. Pasqualino be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. 
Let Justin Jake Pascalino be admitted as lawyer of this court. Si Yang Pang. May it please the court, I move that Si Yang Pang be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Si Yang Pang be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Michael Reedy. May it please the court, I move that Michael Reedy be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Michael Reedy be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Alessandra Antonia Romeo. May it please the court, I move that Alessandra Antonia Romeo be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Alessandra Antonia Romeo be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Navina Fioni Rufote. May it please the court, I move that my daughter Navina Dioni Roshan be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Navina Dioni Roshan be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Ella Rose. <coughs> Let Ella Rose Rowe be admitted as lawyer of this court. Shaveen Saleh. May it please the court, I move that Shaveen Saleh be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Shaveen Saleh be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Hannah Louise Pond. May it please the court, I move that Hannah Louise Pond be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Hannah Louise Pond be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Joseph Tranzillo. Let Joseph Tranzillo be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Pamela Demi Basile. May it please the court, I move that Pamela Demi Basile be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Pamela Demi Basile be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Charlie Macmillan Yates. May it please the court, I move that Charlie Macmillan Yates be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Charlie Macmillan Yates be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Gabrielle. May it please the court, I move that Gabrielle Chun Ling Yip be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Gabrielle Chun Ling Yip be admitted as a lawyer of this court. It will be necessary for the purpose of swearing an oath or making an affirmation that all those admit being admitted today stand up, but please remain in your current places. Could all admittees please stand? Timilahin Adibayo Ajibola, Marissa Louise Alexio, Anurag Tada, Chun Kong Chai, Wing Ton Chan, Emma Kathleen Curry, Moses Elsage, Martin Hui Ching Fan, Melanie Afonso Fernandez, Francesca Guizzi, Catherine Lauren Keane, Nicola Joanne Kelso, Ahmad Rukesh Maharaj, <coughs> Diane Martin-Tanakis, Michael Charles Martin, Mark Daniel McCallery, Monique Jacqueline Messenger, Shanice Nami, Justin Jake Pascalino, Si Yang Fang, <coughs> Michael Reedy, Alessandra Antonia Romeo, Navina Dioni Rotan, Ella Rose Rowe, Javine Saleh, Hannah Louise Pong, Joseph Tranzulo, Pamela Demi Vassil, Charlie Macmillan Yates, Gabrielle Chung Ling Yip. Do you severally swear or declare and affirm that you will truly and honestly conduct yourselves in the practice of a lawyer of the Supreme Court of New South Wales and that you will faithfully serve as such in the administration of the laws and usages of this state according to the best of your knowledge, skill and ability. Would you please say, so help me God, all I do. So help me God. Please be seated. Now that the formal part of the proceedings has ended, I'd like to warmly welcome you to the Supreme Court of New South Wales. Present with me on the bench today from, to my right is Justice Bell, who is the President of the Court of Appeal, and to my left, Justice Hoban, who is the Chief Judge of the Common Law Division of the Court. Together, we constitute the Court that has, in the exercise of its jurisdiction, admitted you to practice. As we gather here today, I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and pay my respects to, to their elders, past, present and emerging. We recognise the long-standing and enduring customs and traditions of Australia's First Nations, 
and acknowledge with deep regret the role our legal system has had in perpetrating many injustices against Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. To all the new lawyers here today, welcome to the legal profession. Today is a day for celebration. You all worked extremely hard to get here through caffeine fueled nights and obscure problem questions, reading countless wafer thin pages of textbook and far more cases than you can ever hope to remember. Rest assured, for those of you with a bibliophobia, that is a fear of running out of reading material, as lawyers that will never happen. <laughs> you, have entered the, you have entered the world of eggshell skulls, encountered the mysterious reasonable person, and have understood the Constitution consists of so much more than just the vibe of the thing. In becoming a lawyer, you have today joined a centuries old profession with ancient origins. The custom of advocates swearing an admissions oath dates back to the 12th century. This court first admitted lawyers to practice in 1824, and by 1830, the names of lawyers were entered onto rolls in this state. You have now become part of this tradition almost 200 years later. Perhaps for some of you, or more likely for your family and friends, that's how long it feels like you've been studying. Uh, on that note, I'm also pleased to welcome those with you here today or watching on the live stream. For many of you, the support of your family and friends would have been invaluable. No doubt, they've also often been on your finely honed skills of argument and persuasion. Uh, I do hope you take the time to thank them today. The oath or affirmation you have made today is a serious one and deserves solemn regard. Whether you work in private practice, at the bar, in a community legal centre, or in an entirely different field, you should be known for your honesty, your integrity, and your commitment to justice. It is an acknowledgement of this weighty responsibility that we observe today's unique formalities, including the moving of lawyers, swearing of oaths or making of affirmations, and even our somewhat unusual choice of fashion. Now, on a lighter note some years ago, a young member of the audience asked if we were doing Santa photos after the ceremony. <laughs> uh, I was very sorry to disappoint. But although we mark this occasion with formality and tradition, not everything in the legal profession remains unchanging. You'll be unsurprised to hear that last year we had to adapt quite a bit. COVID-19 meant a rapid shift to increase use of virtual courtroom setups and technology to ensure that access to justice continued in the midst of a pandemic. Now things didn't always go smoothly as those with me on the bench can probably attest to and indeed frequently reminded me last year. There have been real difficulties to grapple with in terms of open justice, effective communication and fairness to participants. And occasionally a lawyer might even get stuck behind a Zoom kitten filter. <laughs> but for all the challenges we faced, the impetus is greater than ever before for us to prioritise flexibility and accessibility. Better use of technology and increased working from home arrangements have profound implications for, our, for how our legal system interacts with many people, including those in rural and remote areas, those with a disability, medical conditions or carers' responsibilities. As the newest members of the profession, you're at the forefront of innovation in the law and have a unique opportunity to see through changes so that justice is done openly and equitably. There are, of course, other changes that deserve attention. When we think of the diversity of the legal profession, we account of the duality that we have come very far and that much still needs to be done. Though women were originally not permitted to practice, since 2018, women have made up more than half of all solicitors with a practising certificate in New South Wales and currently make up 63% of solicitors under the age of 30. Women occupy many of the most senior positions in the law, including, of course, the Chief Justice of Australia. However, women continue to face challenges of representation, including among judges of this court, and, for example, amongst barristers with speaking roles in the High Court. It is, on the other hand, heartening to see that the local court of New South Wales has almost achieved gender parity amongst magistrates, but we, magistrates, but we must not be complacent about these issues. There are other notable diversity concerns that we must face head on. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and people from diverse cultural backgrounds 
continue to be alarmingly underrepresented in the legal profession, and particularly within the judiciary and the ranks of senior counsel. We must also be alert to barriers to the profession from people with less privileged backgrounds. Law should not be a profession for the wealthy, and, and the idea that students may be dissuaded from studying law by the cost of a law degree, which this year has again increased, or because of other systemic issues, is troubling. Not just this, but we'll only achieve a truly diverse profession when barriers to advancement are broken down and people from different backgrounds are properly supported in a collegiate and inclusive environment, free from harassment and discrimination. These issues are fundamental to a just and transparent legal system and to the legitimacy of the rule of law. We need diverse representation amongst advocates and judges so that all people who become involved in our justice system can be properly heard and fairly engaged with by a system reflective of our broader community. Despite these challenges, there is real scope for change. There is far greater diversity of background amongst junior lawyers than those who have been around for as long as me. You only need to look around the courtroom at your fellow admittees and then at the paintings on the wall to see that this is so. You are, a, you are in a unique position as new lawyers who are entering the profession at a time when more than ever your words and actions are having an impact for good. You are being heard and taken seriously when you agitate to correct injustices, whether it be speaking out about unsustainable working cultures, sexual harassment or bullying within the profession, unfair laws or systemic failings affecting our society's most vulnerable. I urge you to continue to speak up for these things. They do matter. You are the future of the profession and will steer the direction that it will take. As a lawyer, you will need to make difficult ethical decisions at times. With regard to our personal characteristics, lawyers have been the butt of jokes for centuries. Some would say there are only, of course, a handful of lawyer jokes. The rest are true stories. <laughs> but jokes aside, you must use the tools you have developed to think critically and not compromise on your fundamental duties to the court, the administration of justice, and other ethical duties you must uphold. Now you are lawyers, you can get paid to argue instead of just arguing for free. Of course, there is a lot more to it than that. You're an advisor, a problem solver, a mediator, and an advocate for the marginalised. As you go about your day-to-day -day work, remember that you're not merely dealing with dealing with law, the law in a vacuum as a series of abstract concepts, but law as it applies to people's lives. For this reason, you must strive to deliver legal services competently and fearlessly with courtesy and integrity. Justice Gagler, before he was a High Court judge, once said, you must be prepared to give the same answer to the same questions for the same reasons, no matter who asked the question or for what purpose or in what context the asking may occur. That is foundational to upholding the rule of law. For those of you who will practice law, the way you communicate information to others will have profound consequences for access to justice. For a non-lawyer, the law is often incomprehensible. One of your roles as a lawyer will be to make law accessible to others, sometimes by deciphering legal complexities, other times by deciphering poor legal drafting, and sometimes both. One thing you will regrettably strike throughout your career is legislation which seems carefully crafted with the object of ensuring that no one can understand it. Your task is not just to understand it, but to explain it clearly to those whose rights and interests are affected by it. As lawyers, we must not keep the law locked up as something knowable only to us. A client reading your advice should be empowered to understand your meaning not mystified and confused. So be clear and concise in your writing and your speaking. Plain English is powerful. Consider, do I really need to say aforementioned or herewith? Must I show off by sprinkling in that Latin phrase? Should I use double negatives, tautologies and wordy clauses that take up a whole page? I would suggest the answer to those questions is a resounding no. The best advocates can make their points simply and succinctly. Now, I must confess that some of the most experienced lawyers and judges from time to time can do with that reminder, 
but don't pick up their bad habits. I also want to speak about failure. I would not be surprised if there are quite a few overachievers and perfectionists in the room today. Even so, at various points of your career, you will make mistakes, some minor, some more serious. When you do make mistakes, your commitment to honesty, integrity and the administration of justice means that you must take responsibility, correct what you can and learn from those errors. You must fail at times in order to grow. What is important is that you try not to make the same mistake twice. I myself have made many mistakes over the years, too many to, rem to remember. I rely on my colleagues to remind me of them. <laughs> but even as Chief Justice, my decisions have on occasions been successfully appealed to the High Court. When that happens, I'm obliged to remind myself through gritted teeth that it's no rumour that the High Court's infallible. But at times, even dissenting High Court judgments become the law. Finally, I want to emphasise that your mental health is extremely important. This may sound unexpected at this type of ceremony, but the law is not everything. There may be times when you feel overwhelmed, burnt out or distressed. If you do, you should not be afraid to seek professional help or take a step back when you need to. Also remember that the law is a collegiate profession and in times of difficulty, the support of your peers will prove invaluable. I found that throughout my practicing life. Although you might find it hard to believe, I was admitted quite a long time ago. Um, I lost my first case, and I lost many more after that. Throughout my 35 years in practice, I could always count on the other barristers in my chambers to share my disappointment at the unfairness of the verdict, the slight tactics of opposing counsel, and most often I regret to say the obtuseness of the judge or judges before whom I was appearing. Um, I hasten to add I don't include either of my fellow judges on the bench in that comment. <laughs> on behalf of all the judges of the Supreme Court, and particularly those sitting with me today, I once again congratulate you on your admission and welcome you to the legal profession. The court will now adjourn. All stand. This honourable court is now adjourned. God save the Queen. <laughs>